Welcome everyone to the Gemini full moon ceremony. I think some of the emails I sent out said Taurus. That was last month. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm glad you all decided to pop in. Let's go ahead and call it some sacred space. Get ourselves reoriented. I know those that are in my classes are probably feeling a little wobbly because we took a week off. So let's all just take a breath. Ah. And then as you exhale, just drop your grounding cords down. Send your roots down. Let yourself be held by the mother, by the earth. Feel her magnetism just pull you. And then inhale, draw that earth energy up through your body. Send it up and out through the top of the head. Connecting with the way, 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 way up beyond the astral plane, out to and through the crystalline grid, out to divine creator, creatrix, all the way up. And then call that beautiful, loving energy down through your bodies. Send it all the way down into the earth, activating the as above, so below. And then connecting with that flow deep inside your body. You came in with this. All we do is turn it on. So connect with that flow. And breathing in and breathing out, activate the as within. So without. As the universe, so the soul. Moving to the north, we welcome Mother Earth. We welcome structure and form. We welcome the solid ground beneath our feet. And we give thanks for that. Moving to the south, we welcome water. We welcome love. We welcome clear, clean, current emotion. Being present. Feeling all the feels. And sharing, being able to share that love with others. Moving to the West, we welcome air and mind, the ability to think and express. We welcome our guides, angels, allies, and helpers, all of those that protect us and look out for us. And moving to the East, we welcome fire, movement, passion, divine right action. Moving to the center, we call in and down, the divine feminine and the divine masculine in sacred right relationship. We call that beautiful energy down through our bodies. We call up Mama Gaia to pull and magnetize that energy through us. We welcome our own sweet, extraordinary souls into this circle. We ask that all of these energies be with us, pray with us, and dance with us. For our mutual benefit, I hope. Here we go.
that just makes everything all better. <clears throat> so take a minute. I don't know about the rest of you, but for myself, I need to just like come back into center. So feel into your body and just notice, notice your energy field. Notice where it is. Is it way out there or is it in here? It's like, just pay attention. You don't really need to change anything, but just see how you feel. I know I've just talked to so many people that um, feel kind of battered, you know, feel kind of shoved around. Um, and <clears throat> even though, <laughs> even though we may feel that way, that's really not what's happening. What's happening is really for our highest good. So my question for you tonight, and this is going to be my question for you for a bit, because if you haven't noticed yet, if you haven't got those emails yet, I'm trying to get this thing off of my screen. Hang on a minute. There we go. Um, we're getting ready to do a summit that's all about this. So I want you to ask yourself this question. What <clears throat> do you really want to do? Are you doing it? What is it that you came here to do? And are you doing it? Um, we have spent the past month in what we call affectionately call Scorpio season, which is the excavating, you know, that Scorpio, it's like this giant fish that comes and grabs you and just takes you down under and lets you feel everything. <clears throat> and the reason that happens is so if there are things in there that need to be cleared, you can clear them. <laughs> Most of us are like, yeah, but that's why it's here. So now look at this. We've had 30 days, 28 days to clear all that out. The sun has gratefully moved into Sagittarius. And here we are at this Gemini full moon. And now we're supported to make changes that we may need to need or want to make. And if we've done our excavation work, if we've done our healing, then we're set, we're ready. We're ready to do that. And even if we haven't, there's still a ton of support to help us move in that direction. So whatever it is, when you answer that question, this full moon is here to support it. It's got a T-square with Mars and Ceres and Saturn. We're going to talk about all of that, but it's going to happen in just a few hours. It's going to peak. We're already in the window. So it's going to peak at 3.16 a.m. tomorrow, which is, you know, a few hours from now. So all Gemini full moons are good for release and adjustment when it comes to learning, communication, writing, and teaching. Change is also supported in the short term, um, especially, you know, we're traveling, we're all moving around and visiting people, perfect for the holiday season. So that's also supported. But when you break down what else is happening with this moon, you're going to see what I mean. So first of all, Mars is in opposition to the moon. So that means it's right across from it. So it's like this big mirror back and forth. And what that's going to do is push you forward. It's going to help to push you forward to meet your goals. Mars carries the energy of the warrior, the pioneer, the initiator. It's like, get up and go. His motto is just do it. So think about that question. What do you really want to do? When you answer it, Mars can help you. Now, <laughs> I just love the way these things line up because 
it's not going to be this mystical, magical, oh, it all just happened and landed in my lap. It can, but only if your actions are aligned with your purpose. So you want to be asking yourself that. You want to be asking, am I really aligned with my purpose? So Saturn and Mars are hanging out together. And, you know, Mars is the get up and go. Saturn is color inside the lines, do everything appropriately. So it can, um, Saturn's coaching us to um, grow up and do what you really want to do. So things like maturity, responsibility, good time management being able to plan the work and work the plan, getting your ducks in a row, so to speak. Saturn is here to help you do that. So it's not just, you know, sitting back, and hoping that enlightenment will happen and it'll all just fall in your lap. No, this is the step-by-step -step action that you need to take to make your dreams manifest. And both of these planets are lined up with the moon to help you do that. Now, you also have another, there's another little blessing here in that Saturn is in Pisces. So Pisces is all about visualization and feeling and love and the big picture. And usually folks are, you know, there's, sometimes an altruistic flavor to the thing that we want to do. We want to do it for the betterment of the planet or the betterment. So all of that is supported with this Saturn in Pisces. It's like, yes, we need all the players on the team. We need everybody in alignment with who they are and what they're here to do because we need it. Now, here's the kicker. What if you're not in alignment with your life purpose? <laughs> Saturn can throw up roadblocks, obstacles. And so if you feel like, you know, I'm heading in this direction and then all of a sudden whack, whack, whack. Couple of things that you should look at. Number one, am I really in alignment with my life purpose? Number two, um, did I get all that clearing work done back in Scorpio month? <laughs> Is, are there things that are in my way that if I got them out of my way, things would flow smoother? So if you notice this happening, if you're feeling stuck, don't beat yourself up. Just sit with it and ask some of these hard questions. Am I really in alignment? Is this really the direction that I want to go, that I'm supposed to go? And if it is, keep going. Because a lot of times, you know, that's why you have this um, perseverance thing happening. Mars and Saturn together are going to give you that perseverance. But you need to be clear on, is this the right direction for me? And really the question then becomes, if things are a little wonky. Should I pivot or should I keep going? Pivot or persevere. So, so then, and all of those are put together in what we call a T-square that includes the sun, the moon, Mars, Ceres, and Saturn. So Ceres has the most specialized meaning because she's one of the goddesses and um, she represents abundance. And remember I told you, trauma healing. Now, you've heard me say this before. It says, to boost abundance under this full moon, first examine what you want to release or adjust to amplify the type of wealth you want to increase. So wealth doesn't necessarily have to be money. It can be anything that makes your life better. So once you're clear on that, then Mars can help you begin to push forward to manifest things. But let's look at this. 
healing trauma supports abundance. Any of you that have done Made for Miracles know that this is true. Anytime, it's, it's effective trauma healing is one of the best ways to increase your abundance. Why? Because our ego, I've talked about this before, our ego is going to protect us at all costs. It's its enemy is change. And if it senses change on the horizon, it will thwart whatever it is you're trying to do because that's just its job. And if we still have wounded parts inside of us, they'll be afraid. They won't, you know, there's a myriad of reasons that you'll throw up in your own way about why you can't. I can't do that because. Um, and mostly it's because you're afraid. It's because that little wounded part of you doesn't think it's safe. It does. You might have to be visible. You might have to get out in front of people. <gasps> and that could be scary. Um, you, There could be other things that those wounded parts just will not, don't want to do. So I know sometimes I can be a hard taskmaster and just like, get in there, clean it up, la, la, la. But when you're healing trauma, you really have to take care of those parts of yourself. You have to love those parts of yourself. And a lot of times I think what happens is we just beat ourselves up because, you know, we have all these plans and we have all these things that we want to have come into fruition, but we haven't taken the time or the care to take care of ourselves first. So that is also supported with this moon. It's like, now is the time where you can maybe release some of the fear, maybe release some of the pressure you put on yourself to perform in a certain way and um, maybe sit back and rest in the arms of the goddess and let her lead you. Um, another way to think about it is that unhealed traumas can create energetic blocks and flow the flow of abundance the flow of everything divine information flows through our body but if there's blocks in the way we'll miss it we won't hear it the more blocked you are the less divine energy you can receive so it's as if somebody puts their finger on the top of the straw or things just squeeze and tighten down and no flow is happening. So um, when you begin to kind of scrape some of that off, you can allow that flow to move. So this T-square gives you a great opportunity to dive into shadow work, any kind. Anything that works for you that you found, if you haven't found anything, Google shadow work. Um, Made for Miracles is shadow work. So, and we're, you know, we just started a new session. If you want to jump in on that, you still can. So just know that all of that, the planet, your guides, your angels, the universe, all of the divine forces want and need you to succeed. And so they are here to support you. But the golden rule for them is that they can't do it. They can't help unless you ask. You have to drive the car. You're the one that has to ask for assistance that has to set an intention to move forward, to, to, you know, let's try to go over here. Let's try to go over here. And 
your guides, your angels, nothing or nobody is going to shove you into that. You are the one that has to ask. If you don't ask, it will it'll just feel like crickets out there. But if you ask, you will get the support that you need. So what this means practically is once again, there's that question. Are you doing what you came here to do? And if not, what are the reasons that you've given yourself? What do you need to heal to allow yourself to do that? How's your money? How's your relationships? How's your relationship to money? How's your creativity? And most of all, what is that one big thing that you want to release and be done with once and for all that will allow you to do what you came here to do? So those are some kind of big, heavy questions. But if you answer them or answer these, and I'm going to give you some time to journal. Um, it may guide you along this path so that you know the intentions you want to set tonight and within this week. You know what you need to release. You know what needs to be shed. So take a few minutes and um, journal with these. And I'd play the music, but I want to put this up on YouTube. They'll kick me out if I play anything except the fast stuff because it's free.
All right, while you are finishing that up, I'm going to go ahead and go through the cards that I pulled for us. Um, this is actually quite perfect for the earth door. I pulled receiving in the physical. So the way this wheel is set up, we're set up to manifest things in the physical, just like the, the plant, the outer planets, the stars impinge upon our planet. This is how the divine creates in the physical. The beauty of this planet is that there are as many ways to receive as there are givers and receivers. We can receive love with our emotions. We can receive information with our minds. We can receive energy by engaging our passion and action. One of the wonderful ways to receive in the physical realm, or is in the physical realm. In fact, all those other ways are pretty much contingent upon receiving in the physical. We literally need a physical body to engage all those other ways of receiving. This way of receiving is literally written in the stars. The archetypal energy of Capricorn, an earth sign, lives in the north door on the cosmic map. The north is traditionally known as the receiving door. Sometimes many of us grow up with stories that keep us blocked from re receiving in the physical realm. We may not feel we, we deserve to receive. We may feel like we should always be giving rather than receiving. It helps to remember that we are designed to receive in the physical realm. And I feel like that's one of the things that has been, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of been um, very, very convoluted because since we've been taught to deny ourselves that we are we're unworthy, there is this constant feeling for some people. I mean, I feel like it's the root of materialism because if we knew for just one second how much the divine loves us, how much the divine loves this planet, how how, how much is available for us. We would never want for anything, ever. But we've been, you know, I think we've been brainwashed. We've forgotten all of that. And so um, sometimes it, it is challenging to learn to receive in the physical. And yet, if we allowed ourselves to do that, everything could go back to balance. It was truly the original plan. We have to receive in the physical because we live in the physical realm. So are there old stories blocking your receiving? Where do you need to open and allow yourself to receive in the physical? And the water door, connection. Mm -hmm. Water as an element has connective qualities. It can bind substances together. And this binding quality can turn random vegetables into soup, pigments and canvas into a painting. Connection between humans can dispel loneliness, lower stress, generate love and heal wounds. The connective powers of water are deep and rich, and they are here to serve you. So where do you need more connection? You may want to journal with earth and water for a minute. See if they have anything to say to you about your intentions.
So air is far sight. Imagine an eagle soaring high above the earth. Eagles are said to have the best sight of any bird and have often been associated with the air realm. This is because they have the ability, the ability to look ahead, to see what's coming. They also fly high so they can get a big picture vision of the landscape below. As we create our lives, we too need to develop the ability to rise high so we can see far into the future. What effects are our actions now having on generations to come? Let that one land. What effects are our actions now having on generations to come? How will what we do right now influence the future? Where do we need to be more mindful of those coming after us? In our own creations, what do we need to know about the future so that we can create in a good way today? So that Saturn energy that's hanging out, those are questions Saturn would be asking us to look at. Planning for the next seven, the next seven generations. So what does air have to say to you about doing what you came to here to do? And then fire is all about rhythm. Rhythm is the organizing element of fire and movement. When we move in a systematic way, a rhythmic way, our movement becomes organized and directed toward a specific outcome. We don't waste energy. We use our energy efficiently. Think about this. In its original pristine form, everything on this planet has its own rhythm. From the cycles and seasons of nature to the life cycle of an insect. When we begin to learn and understand the rhythms of this planet we call home, we can better harness those energies and work in sync with them. That's why we get together once a month here, every month, to sync our bodies to the rhythms of this planet. Once again, this helps us use our energy wisely. Where do you need to become more rhythmic with your actions? And you know, Sometimes that rhythm, think about it, the sun comes up, the sun goes down. The sun comes up, the sun goes down. We get up and then we go down, we go to sleep. When you think about rhythm, think also about balance. So maybe in order to get into rhythm with yourself, with what you're here to do, you may need to slow down your rhythm. So you have more time to just sit and be in receiving mode. So ask yourself, you know, the planet kind of gives us, dictates some of those rhythms. But we may have to sink ourselves into those rhythms. Mama doesn't move that fast, y'all. She doesn't. We move a heck of a lot faster. And it may be time for us to just go, okay, I'm going to move with the pace of the earth for a little bit. 
So where do you need to align with the rhythms of the planet to enhance your creative abilities? For the spirit card, I pulled crystalline consciousness. Beyond our electromagnetic field, the electromagnetic field of the planet and the electromagnetic field of the planet lives another realm of consciousness, crystalline consciousness. Some people know this as the net um, or Indra's net. I have heard it said that, um, you know, the net understands and operates on sacred geometry. And I've heard it said that sacred geometry is literally the voice of the divine. When our bodies can't understand words, sacred geometry can give us little pockets of divine information. This level of consciousness is like a high-powered supercomputer, you know, in our words, that stores, utilizes, and processes information much at a much faster pace than we're used to when we work in the electromagnetic field. Around 2004, this realm became accessible to us. And in 2012, the planet totally shifted to this, eh, we call it a new operating system, but it's really just, we, we now, we've grown up and get to play with the big kids. And now we get to, to use it. It's been around a very long time, since, since before us, for sure. So when you feel sluggish, heavy, or just moving really slow, Shifting to crystalline consciousness can give you an added boost. Um, and so even just, you know, stretching your arms out so you can feel it because it's right at the edge of your fingertips or just asking to connect with that um, net, with that crystalline consciousness grid um, can give you a little boost of energy. And there's lots of other ways to do that, but um, that's a really good start, really good way. Okay, I also pulled a money card. And of course, Saturn, sorry, budget was the card I pulled. So of course, Saturn would dictate that, right? I know this is considered a dirty word sometimes. And it took me years to make friends with this word and allow it to work for me. So, and I learned to play games with this word. I have, Saturn is like a spotlight right across from my sun sign. So Saturn and I have been dancing together all my life. Um, and I've been running, or I used to run a lot. Um, so there are many games that we can play with ourselves that cause us to avoid or ignore this practice. But there's also games we can play that help us get into the habit of doing it. So I've played both. And really, the getting into the habit of doing it is the better game. So for instance, rather than feeling like this is a cage that keeps you from enjoying life, begin to see it as a plan, a roadmap, a guide. When I do my budget at the beginning of every month, I see it as Placing my order to the universe. So instead of like, this is the box I have to live within, I go here, this, these are all the things that I need. This is what I, this is how I'm going to appropriate what comes in. And I'm telling the universe right now, here it is. 
Here's my list for the month. So um, the mindset I hold is this. I'm here to do a job for God, God is the universe, whoever. It's like my life is not my own. It's theirs. I am in alignment with my purpose and I'm doing my job. Here's the list of the things I'm going to need in order to do that job, along with their cost, line by line. Then I total it and put it away. And I may check in with it in the middle of the month and see how I'm doing. I always look at it at the end and see how I did. But what I'm doing is I'm allowing the universe to bring me what I need. And in turn, I'm using those gifts the way I said I would. This all comes with an attitude of allowing myself to be provided for rather than feeling confined and limited. It also helps me see what's coming so that I can be prepared for unforeseen events. So if you have trouble with this one, try it that way for a month or two. My experience is usually that I always have more than what I budgeted for. And that goes into savings every time. And it works. It act this, you know, there's lots of games you can play with yourself to um, wrap yourself around this. But when you can befriend these practices, um, they're really going to support you. And trust me, I know from experience, I was a runner. Um, I know what it's like not to want to and have all the reasons why I can't. Not true. So, as I was saying when we got started, if you haven't received the email yet, this is happening in two weeks. Um, December 11th, free summit 28 speakers um enchanted inside the life of spiritual leaders and entrepreneurs so if you have toyed with the idea of doing something like this on your own i've gathered people that have taught me i've gathered people that i've learned with i've gathered people that i've taught all of them are on this summit and there there many of them well all of them have wonderful information but a lot of them are telling the real raw down and dirty story about how they got here. And they're also bringing tons and tons of gifts, tons and tons of wisdom. Um, whether you're thinking about moving into entrepreneurship or not, you will be so blessed if you come and visit us. So plan to do that. Sign up for the conference. Whether you're on my email list or not, sign up so that um, we can get you all the goodies. All right, let's take a minute and set an intention. If you haven't already done so, I'm going to give you another little minute to set an intention for this full moon cycle.
you another minute. And we're going to get up and move. All right, everyone. Let's activate those intentions in our bodies. Here we go. fun. Thanks for coming. Thanks for playing. <laughs> I give thanks to the elemental forces for holding space for us tonight. I give thanks for these beautiful dedicated souls that came out after the long holiday weekend to do this work. And I close this circle in the light. So hang on just one second. We'll stop the share so you can all see everyone. Wait a minute, view all of us. There, look at you all. There's Sharon, all my people. So good to see you all. All right, loves. I will see you soon. Sign up. Jean, hello. So good to see you. It's just fun to see who all shows up because I don't get to see that. All right, good to see all of you and I will see you soon. Sign up for the summit. You won't you will be so glad you did. <laughs>